Are we rolling? Yes, we are. Hello, everybody. My name's Darren, and welcome back to a very cold kilowatt challenge. In today's episode, you're going to see some of this. This is how you do it. You might see some of this, and that will be absolutely fine. I hope. <laughs> and you'll definitely see one of these. It says in the manual. But before all that, it's cold today. It's really, really cold today. Oh, let's make some DC cables. Now, this is not going to be a how-to video. This is going to be a how I do it video. Um, the truth be known, I found out when I started building these cables or making these cables, I don't actually have all of the right tools, so I don't feel qualified enough to be able to say this is how you do it. But I will show you how I do it. And you can see I've already started with the DC cables. So I've kind of figured it out. But before we start making the cable, we need to have a chat about these. These are really important. <sighs> the DC cables are the cables which connect the chargers and the inverters to the battery. The battery is connected to the shunt the Lynx shunt, which in turn are connected to the Lynx distributors. Now in this picture, this is our battery. This is a temporary battery, don't worry. This is providing 48 volts so that I can bring online each of the devices and set the config. My main battery, which is 15 kilowatt hours of lithium ion phosphate, is not yet here. It's supposed to be coming in the next couple of days, fingers crossed. Now, DC cables. You can see that the charge controllers here and here have already got their DC cables installed. Ignore the ethernet cables, that's just for communication between the devices. Now you can see that they're very, 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 very thick, chunky uh, DC cables. These are actually 70 millimeters squared. And you can see that a positive and a negative goes from the device straight into the distributor. The idea being, if you think about just this charger on its own, it has its own dedicated plus and minus connection into the Lynx distributor, which goes through the shunt, which measures the uh, current and voltage, uh, the current going in and out of the battery when we're charging and discharging, and then the battery connection goes off to here behind me. Now, why are these cables so big? <laughs> because A, they're gonna carry a lot of power, and B, we need to keep the resistance to the minimum amount as possible. Now you will notice, and I'll talk about this in a second, that the cables go directly to the Lynx distributor. This one, and this charge controller, which is significantly larger, has exactly the same type of cables, but they are shorter. Shorter, that's the word. Let's talk about the inverters. One, two, and three. This is a three-phase setup. You'll see I've already put the DC cables in phase one, uh, the master phase one, so you can see it, I go into here. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to put the DC cable into phase two. Before we install these cables, obviously we have to make them, that's the point of today's video. But there's something very, very important you need to understand when you're operating in a three phase configuration like I am. Now the reason why I highlighted the word short or shorter on this one, it doesn't matter what the cable lengths of these two chargers are, they operate independently. Yes, they read the voltage and charge the batteries independently, but there are two charge controllers for one battery. Now the Serbo GX controls the overall charging um, power, which is coming from the combined uh, effect from both of these uh, charge controllers, and it's the Serbo GX which is the brains which controls that. So, if this charge controller has got lots of sun and lots of power coming in and this one doesn't, the Serbo GX is still limiting what the battery needs, independently of those two. Now let's talk about the inverters. We have to make sure that the DC cables are the same length from the inverter to the bus bar for all three of the inverters. So when we install this cable, it's gonna look a bit weird, but we're gonna kink this cable out over this way and then back and come into the distributor. We have to do that because we have to make sure that the resistance is the same on the DC bus 
for every single inverter. If we installed the cable from the plus and minus terminal straight down to the bus bar, then there would be more resistance uh, experienced by this inverter and this inver inverter than this one. And I've got a practical example of that. These two charge controllers are connected to the same Lynx distributor, these cables here. And behind me is a 48 volt battery, a little tiny one, but it does the trick for now. Now, despite the fact that this is 70 millimeter cable, this is multi-stranded, tinned, coated, top spec marine grade cable, these two devices actually read a slightly different voltage. This controller is closer to the battery, so this controller actually reads 30 milliamp higher voltage than this one does. I was quite shocked when I saw that. It does make a difference. That extra length of cable makes a lot of difference, especially when it's under load. So you might be asking why have I used 70 millimeter cable? Well, it says in the manual. <laughs> But two, this is good for 485 amps. Now I know through all the calculations that I've made, I'm going to use a maximum of 300 amp. I've got a 15 kilowatt setup, do the maths. So the 70 mil cable is ideal for me. The only thing I'm not 100% sure about yet is exactly where I'm going to put my batteries. My, yeah, my batteries, my battery is a collection of cells. What I'm going to do, my, my plan is, I'm going to install some metal um, containers just out of frame here and I'll put one battery array in one metal box and then I'll put another one above it. So I'm going to need to make a connection from the shunt because th this is going to stay here, this is never going to move. I need to make a uh, take some cables from the shunt to along here under this cable tray to the battery boxes. So to keep that resistance as low as possible, I'll probably use two 70 mil cables per plus, per minus. Now that might seem like an awful lot. However, think about it, the total distance from this inverter, which is on one side of the wall, to the batteries, which will be down there on the other side of the wall, will be probably about three meters. And that's quite a long way for a DC cable run if you're running 300 amps through it. So. My logic is, we'll, I'll put 70 millimeter square into the DC um, bus bar here, and then I'll run a double that capacity over to another Lynx distributor, which I'll install on that wall um, for where the, uh, the battery boxes, and that will be absolutely fine. I hope. <laughs> Hello, this is up to date editing Darren. Yes, it works out fine, don't worry. <laughs> I thought I would just uh, take this opportunity to say hello and explain that this video was going to be about an hour and 20 minutes long. So I've decided to chop it into smaller chunks and drip feed it uh, to you in kind of 10 minute videos. Um, it took a long time to uh, prepare, cut and install all the DC cabling, but uh, I'm really quite happy with how much of it I got on film and I think you'll probably enjoy watching it as well. So that's the end of the first one. When I'm talking about today's video, I actually mean this mini series of video for the next few videos whilst we're doing the DC cabling. So that's it for this one. See you again very, very soon where I shall be cutting and crimping the DC cables. See you on the next one. Oh, thank you to my patrons. As always, see you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.